at Sugarloaf Kids. It's December, and we all know what that means. Christmas! It is! It's almost Christmas! There are so many fun things about this time of the year, but the best reason we celebrate Christmas in Christmas. the first place is Jesus. Yes. This whole month we're celebrating Jesus, God's greatest gift. But before we get our sleigh in the sky, <laughs> we've got some Sugarloaf events to tell you about. Who likes to go look at Christmas lights with I your do. family? I do. Yeah, that's right. We love to do that. And this year, Sugarloaf is hosting a Night of Lights tour and contest. On Friday, December 18th, you'll hop in your car with your fam. You're going to head up right here to Sugarloaf. You'll drive through under the portico and meet our festive staff. We're going to greet you with all the Christmas cheer we can see. Christmas. <laughs> We're going to give you cocoa, and then you're going to head off to see the lights, and you're going to vote online. You know what? What? I have one more surprise. What? Santa's coming! Santa! Yes! Santa. Yes! I know him! I know. And he's going to have a special present for all of you guys. Yay, lights and Santa and Coco! Yay! So much fun! So much fun. We're going to have so much fun, so you don't want to miss it. And the very same weekend on Sunday night, December 20th, we're hosting Jingle Jam! It's a digital Christmas celebration big enough for the whole family so you can gather around your couch in your PJs and enjoy the show. Christmas PJs. Yeah, Christmas PJs, of course. You don't want to miss it. Now, we are going to have a ton of fun, but before we dive into our lesson, take a look at this. Isn't there anyone who knows what Christmas is all about? If you're like me, that just might be the best line from one of your very favorite Christmas specials ever. It really is a great question. It's not the advertisements and holiday displays and decorations. So what is Christmas all about? Maybe it's getting a lot of gifts. Or nailing your performance in the Christmas production. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Raising your Christmas cookie game. Watching every single holiday movie release. There's nothing wrong with any of that, but they're not what Christmas is all about. Lights, please. Christmas is about a tiny, helpless baby born to unknown parents in a small town on the edges of the Roman Empire. Christmas is about the ordinary, everyday people who got a first look at God's master plan. Christmas is about the way God loves us with a love so wild and deep that he sent his very own son to live on earth among us. When you choose to focus on what Christmas really means, others can see God at work in you. That's why celebrating Christmas is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. Hi friends! For our story today, I knew I needed a little help. I needed somebody to help me open up these Christmas presents that are going to represent the three characters in our story today. Mr. Ken, do you like to open presents? Yes, I love Christmas and I love presents. Are they for me? Well, they're really for everyone. Listen, every time I tap a present, you should open it. And when you do, you're going to hear a character speak. And when your character stops speaking, we're going to close the box. You got it? Got it. Okay. In the Bible, in the book of Luke, we can read a story of an ordinary girl named Mary. Mary grew up in an ordinary town called Nazareth. She would have grown up learning the Jewish scriptures, like the one that we talked about last week from Isaiah. Let's read Isaiah 9, 6 together again. Are you guys ready to read along with me? A child will be born to us. A son will be given to us. 
He will rule over us and he will be called Wonderful Advisor and Mighty God. He will also be called Father who lives forever and Prince who brings peace. You see, Mary would have known that God had promised to send a Savior one day. Mary was engaged to be married to a carpenter named Joseph. She must have thought her life would follow an ordinary path until one day everything changed. Yep. Suddenly, right there in the room, an angel appeared. Greetings, Mary. Mary probably dropped what she held, maybe a broom or a batch of bread dough or a needle or thread. And the angel told Mary, the Lord has blessed you in a special way. He is with you. Mary blinked, trying to take it all in. The room must have glowed with light. I, I don't understand. The angel told her. Do not be afraid, Mary. God is very pleased with you. Wow. In one heartbeat, Mary's ordinary day had completely flipped upside down. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son. You must call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High God. He will rule forever over his people. That kingdom will never end. Could it be true? Was Mary going to be the mother of the Savior of the world, the one God had promised long ago? Mary found her voice. How can this happen? I'm not even married yet. And then Gabriel said, The Holy Spirit will make this happen. Your relative Elizabeth will have a child even though she is old. That's because what God says will always come true. Mary's heart was probably pounding in her ears at this point. Her cousin Elizabeth was old enough to be a grandmother. If she was having a baby, anything could happen. Mary chose to trust God. I serve the Lord. May it happen to me just as you said it would. The angel left. Mary's mind must have been reeling with this news. What should she do now? Elizabeth, I have to go see her. The journey to Elizabeth and Zachariah's home in the hill country of Judah would have taken many days of travel along a dusty road. And at last, Mary arrived. She knocked on the door. Why, it's Mary. Elizabeth, I have so much to tell you, she said. I have so much to tell you. As Mary spoke, Elizabeth could feel the child inside of her leap and kick for joy. God's Holy Spirit spoke to Elizabeth, and Elizabeth said this to Mary. God has blessed you more than other women, and blessed is the child you will have. As soon as I heard the sound of your voice, the baby inside of me jumped for joy. You are a woman God has blessed. You have believed that the Lord would keep his promises to you. Wow. God had shown Mary once again that she could find joy in his extraordinary plan for her. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for many weeks. She was so filled with joy that she poured out her heart to God in song. My soul gives glory to the Lord. My spirit delights in God, my Savior. He has taken note of me, even though I'm not considered important. Can you show us even more joy, Mary? He shows his mercy to those who have respect for him. He has filled with good things those who are hungry. Mary, your joy is just overflowing. He has helped the people of Israel who serve him. He has done it just as he had promised to our people of long ago. At the end of three months, 
Mary returned home to Nazareth. She was ready to see how God's plan was about to unfold. God had a good plan for Mary, and He has a good plan for each of us too. Ken, let's open our presents and look inside our boxes. On the bottom, we're gonna find something special. Let's see what it is. Last week, we talked about the big promise God made to his people, that he would one day send a savior. And he kept that promise when he sent Jesus. And that's what we celebrate at Christmas. It was all part of God's plan for us to have a close relationship with him. Yeah, and as Jesus' mom, Mary got to play a super important part in God's story. She must have been really scared when that angel first appeared. But in the end, she chose to trust in the Lord and to have joy. Yeah, and as we see how God's big story unfolded over time, it reminds us that we can trust God no matter what. We can trust that He has a good plan for our life, and knowing that can bring us real joy. You can have joy because God has a plan for you. Can you say that with me? You can have joy because God has a plan for you. Real joy comes from knowing that He has a plan for you. Even when things happen that you don't expect, you can find joy in knowing that God is with you and He sent Jesus for you. Now that is a reason to celebrate. Yeah, our memory verse this month is Luke 2, 11, and it reminds us how God kept His promise when He sent Jesus. Let's practice it together. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Luke 2, 11. Before we go, I want to remind you to do your God time cards. They're worth big points in our Sugarloaf Kids store. You just need to show us your work to earn your points. And if you're worshiping online, you can download those God time cards and today's worship guide for even more fun with this lesson at home. We will see you next week for another adventure.